rice cookers. Welcome back. Today we're finally doing a rear disc conversion on this RD1 CRV. Enjoy. 32 millimeter socket. Next we want to get this brake line freed from the control arm because we're not going to be using this with the discs. And that is a 10 mil. You can just use a 10 mil um, spanner on it, but I've got a crow's foot here and I find them a lot safer. They don't round off as easy. Now you probably want a, a rag or a bucket or something to catch this, but mine is pretty much drained. There we go, put that aside because we will use it again. This next bolt is this one, it's 14. Yep, that's going to be just fine. The axle's going to pop out. So now we can move on to uh, the ones under here, which are 17 and a 14 as well. This one back here, this is a 14. And then these two here, which are 17s. And then these clips that run along the trailing arm and this 10 mil, they are for the ABS sensor wiring. So they also need to be pulled off. Okay, before we pull the arm off, we still need the ABS sensor pulled. It's just here, two 10 mils. This is the loom, and that's what the clips look like. So you just squeeze in on them and push them through. Let's get a uh, 10 mil on that. And there we go. Sorted. Two 14s. And then pull the bottom out. And with that out on the ground, we can now remove the drum brake system and get it ready for having some discs. This is the rear trailing arm of the RD1. This is actually a spare one. This isn't the one I've removed from the car. I, uh, I'd highly recommend just removing the entire trailing arm. Um, that way you can have the hub face pressed out of here for when you need to fully disassemble this. Otherwise, you have to cut it off and um, if that's the way you want to do it that's fine but I think it's kind of a, a stupid way to do it why destroy something to get it off when you can just take the whole assembly off pull it apart and just take it to a local workshop and have them press it out pretty much most workshops will have something to press it out for you they might even do it for free Once you got the drum off, you'll have access to the actual shoes and all the hardware holding all of this together. This is where normally your, uh, your piston would be. I'll expand these two out. Now I have another video on removing the handbrake from the dash that also goes into how to take apart all of this. So I will link that in the description. Um, but I'm just going to go over this quickly in this video. There's obviously there's two 10 mils that hold this on. If you want to remove that at the top, squeeze it in, remove it. You'll obviously have to take the line off. I'd recommend it. Um, trying to take these out with the expanding adjuster and all that shit still intact is highly recommended because these are actually really hard to get back together. So you can do that just by taking these out. I don't even know the correct names for all this shit because um, to be honest with you, I fucking hate drum brakes. So excuse me if I get some stuff wrong. the handbrake line off and with that it's all one piece again there'll be a link to my video on how to take these apart 
on the car, but that's not what I'm up to right now. So I'm just going to breeze through this. It's 12 mil here for the handbrake cable. And there's another 12 mil on the back. Yeah. And that's the clip that holds the, the handbrake cable in place. It's just kind of like a flared out fitting that runs against itself here. So you either need to fold this completely off and run it that way or squish it down and pull it through. I find it easier to just fold it off this edge and go that way with it. So that's what I'm gonna do. There you go. There's a seam between the two right there. So from here, we can start expanding out like that. Same going the other way. Like that, there we go. And that should be able to push off the other side now. There we go. Got the cable free from the back of this plate. There are some bolts here. And to get to these bolts, you go through these holes in the hub face. Get a 14 on that bolt and then line up the hub with that hole there. Set your ugga ugga to maximum or get your pry bar, whatever you're using. There's one. And repeat for the rest. Getting it all pulled off because you're going to need your handbrake cables anyway to go with the disc. So get rid of this handbrake cable. There, like I said, there is another video, link in the description or above, that shows you how to remove the handbrake cables and the drums. These are handy to keep these clips, these P clamps. So I definitely chuck those in a box. Here we have rear trailing arm with the backing plate for the drum brake loosened off. I'll just have a friend of mine, Lawrence, press this out from the back, which will be right here. Press this out. Once it's pressed off of here, you can take this off with it. Repress this back on, obviously with this removed, and then we'll be at a stage where we can start with the rear disc conversion. So let's get this sent away and uh, come back to a setup that's ready to go. We got this back from having the hub pressed out and the backing removed. Also had another friend press in some rear trailing arm bushings because you might as well do them while it's out. So a big thanks to Lawrence and Gary. And uh, we're just gonna go over pretty much most of the stuff you'll need to do this rear disc conversion. First part you're going to need is the bracket. It goes in here. That is supplied by Greg Rolls. I will have a link to his Instagram and his email and all that kind of shit in the comments. Oh, sorry, in the description. You'll be able to find him on one of the CRV enthusiast page. And he also gives you this Nice little printout with it of the stuff you'll need. I've done some things a little bit differently, but the majority of it is exactly as he has it here. So first thing you're gonna need is a longer brake cable or brake line, sorry, which is this. This is to suit the Prelude rear disc and go to the chassis. Um, if you're in the States, apparently there is a person over there that sorts it out for you and they need to be 32 inch long brake lines. Um, I've gone a different route and I had a friend Lawrence here at uh, Nelson Brake and Mechanical and Brake down in Tahuna. He, um, he sorted me out this cable. So we're gonna run it a little bit differently to what you may have seen online in different forums and videos. So yeah, you're gonna need a 97 94 to 97 Honda Accord disc brake cables. 
Um, it's got the same handbrake mechanism as the CRV and it's got the right end for prelude calipers. Um, I got this from Rock Auto and it was fairly inexpensive. I will have full parts list everything in the description of this video. Now the important stuff you're going to need after that stuff, well they're all equally important, is a set of prelude calipers. I got mine off Rock, Rock Auto because the ones I had sourced were garbage. They'd been sat in the rain and gotten all rusted and shite. But the calipers you get, these ones in particular, don't come with a banjo fitting. I guess they're assuming you're replacing it on a prelude. So I had to take the banjo fitting off of my spare prelude calipers. So that's one thing you might have to take note of. Um, I believe that the EG fronts are the same banjo. So yeah, you might have something you can reuse. Then you're also going to need prelude disc brake and the pads to suit, which are these. And last but not least, to get this bracket on here, the bolts you pulled out of the back that were holding the drum backing plate on are these little suckers here. And the length you need is this. So there's not enough meat to go through this and grab thread onto the backing plate. It's not, not long enough. So you need one that's a bit longer. I have a shitload of bolts because I've been stripping some cars and keeping everything. So I haven't had to go to the hardware store um, for most of this stuff. But in the instructions here, it says you need six M10 by 1.25 thread bolts. 20 millimeters in length. I had some bolts that were already the right length and I had some other bolts that were a little bit too long but the right thread pitch. So I just cut them short. You might be able to do the same, you might not. Either way, the uh, description will have what you needed to get and probably where to find it. So now that we got all these parts together, it's time to start prepping this to receive all of this because it's not just as straightforward as bolting it on. This caliper is going to sit somewhere like this and it'll run into this. So we're going to end up having to shave this down a little bit and we've got to clean up a bunch of surfaces. So let's get stuck into it. So this bracket goes on here and it makes use of three holes that are already on here. One back here, one here and one here. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is try and get rid of all of this corrosion. Well, not all of it, but at least get this nice and kind of level so that this has a nice surface to mount to. So let's do that first. So I've just got a few wire wheels here. I'm just going to run it on a drill and clean up the surface around here. Don't need to go the whole way. It's only this half. There we go, got that surface all nice and cleaned up. Just sit in here nicely now. Oh, wait, this way. Yep, like that. Next thing to clean up is the surface here. This is the surface that the um, disc is gonna sit on. So we need that nice and clean too. Don't want it to have a wobble, shimmy, whatever. Uh, let's clean this one up now. Here we go, got this surface nice and polished up. Same with this one. So we're now ready to move on to test fitting our bolts and bracket. Next is three of the six M10 by 1.25 thread bolts. The ones that I cut. They uh, should be about 20 millimeters long. And I think these are 14s. Next we can throw a disc on here. Um, these are from the States, so uh, rear passenger side 
means nothing to me because my passenger side's different. But if you look along the edge, it'll have an R right here. And that's obviously right hand side. That gives you an idea of which direction the venting and cutting is on this. So, oh, you can slap this on here, nice and fresh, get a couple washers and a factory lug nut, just so that it holds it in place. Alright, now we got the bracket and the disc on, let's look at sliding this caliper on here. Well, that doesn't really want to go on there, and that's because it is colliding with this. So we're gonna have to trim this, but before we do that, let's get this bracket on on its own and line up some bolts with it and make sure we got the right length bolts for that. Ah, man, that was freaking tight. So it's gonna go on like this with the bleeder facing down which means later we're gonna to have to bleed this off the car. So there we go. It slides on there nicely. Now we just need a bolt that goes through this plate and won't hit the disc. And the top one and the bottom one is not going to collide with the disc. It's good. Slide this on here. Next thing we need to look at is the clearance for the caliper. And it is hitting on everything right here. And the bolts that go through to the handbrake bracket, which I need to take off the other caliper, they're gonna collide with some stuff too. So we need to trim down and along here. So I'll just grab a pen. Here you go, kinda Down around that, and then from here, something, something like that. Hurry, 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 hurry. So this is when you would grab a cutoff wheel and cut along this. Uh, I have a bench grinder or a what do you call it? Belt sander. So I'm going to take this all back apart and sand this down in the belt sander. Down this line through here. And then that'll allow the caliper to slide back and forth through here. So I've got the disc and the bracket removed. This is the area that I need to trim down from pretty much here all the way up to here. Now I've already done this once. And basically, there's a folded edge here. And you pretty much have to go all the way down to where it's not folded anymore. Let's go get this sanded T-fuck down. There we go, I've got that trimmed down along here. So a little bit of my paint pen there, but I think I should be okay. So now let's run another test fit, put the bracket and caliper back on and see how we are for clearance. Oh Looks like it still might be touching somewhere. So it's just catching here on the on the bottom. We're looking okay up here and we're I think we're looking pretty decent here because this actually slides quite a bit further forward than where it is right now and when this twists down this also comes up. So um, the area that I've actually already still got painted 
right there. Like that. And a little dip right there. Okay, let's pull it apart one more time. Bit of a pain in the ass. Another test fit. Hopefully this has got it. We're clearing under the actual caliper itself, but where this edge goes through, we're fouling up, but it's not by much. So what I'm gonna do is just use the dribble and chip away at some of that. That's gonna work just nicely. Now before I take this back off, I'm gonna get the handbrake bracket from the other caliper over there. It needs to go onto here, and then the line will clip onto this. But the bolts that run through this to hold the bracket on, I need to make sure they clear down in here as well. So just get, get, we'll just go get those, and uh, yeah, we'll transfer that over. So this is the handbrake bracket off of my spare set of prelude calipers. Um, you're obviously going to need this so that you can run a handbrake, run the cable through here. This particular set that I've purchased didn't come with this. There might be other ones that do. You might just have to check the listings. Or if you can get to a junkyard or whatever, just take this. It's two 12s. And it just transfers over like that. And these bolts are kind of long. They stick out the back. So you might have to trim them a bit shorter so they don't catch on the trailing arm. Uh, that one there catches a little bit on here. So what I'll do is I'll take it out. And we'll measure it up like that. Mark it. Mark it with my shitty fucking pen. God damn it. There we go. And we'll cut that white piece off and then it won't be in the way. The next thing to check is the clearance from this diameter to this diameter. Um, my other caliper gave me a little bit of grief and I actually had to use a, um, a Dremel with some sand, a sanding disc in here. Uh, I don't know if that's corrosion or a JDM thing or what, but no, it was a corrosion thing. Yeah, it just fits in there fine. You use one of these kind of holding clips, figure what they're called, but most brake places will have them. You can probably pick pick up, purchase, whatever. Go in there and hold the cable in place. And it goes through onto this pin. And if you don't have the pin, just use some hardware, like a nut and bolt. But we don't need that on there just yet. So that all checks out. Everything clears. So I'll quickly take this all apart and we'll get some Loctite on those bolts for the last Last time, final assembly. A bit of blue on there. And then repeat for these two. Uh, before I chuck everything back together, I'm just gonna quickly um, hit this edge with a little bit of paint. Don't need a lot, so. Yeah, I'll just quickly tape this and paint it. You don't want that rusting. Should really paint the whole fucking thing, but I ain't gonna do it. Got some rust kill paint on here on this exposed metal. Uh, so now it's time to chuck everything back together and we'll look at chucking it onto the chassis. Last thing to do before getting this on the chassis is the brake pad. So it's a good chance to get some copper coat on some things. 
I like to use a little bit on pretty much any of the middle contact areas just to re help reduce squeaks and rattles and stuff. So let's get some copper on here and chuck it together. Okay, back one's going on last then, little bitch. We're gonna have to pull this off to bleed it because it's upside down. Uh, that means these bolts need, don't need to be finalized. This is just to hold everything in place. So don't stress about these bolts at the moment. Um, let's get this over to the car. At the moment I have the lower control arm missing from this side and the other side. It's just because of the way I'm filming this. So this is a really good opportunity to change the diff out. This is a 2004 RD5 diff and it's from a Japanese spec CRV. I don't know the specs. I don't know if it's better. It might be the same, but it isn't leaking. The RD1 diff is leaking out of this main seal and instead of repairing it, I think what I'll do is I'll just swap this one in. So let's quickly drop this diff out and um, see if we can bolt it up there. So this is the K-series RD5 diff. This is the B-series one. Um, as you can see, they are dimensionally pretty similar, but the mounting points are very different. This one sits a lot higher in the RD5 chassis, and this one sits a lot further down from the chassis. So my guess is that we just swap all the mounting shit over. So all of this swaps over to these bolts and all of this comes off and the swaps over to there. diff in place. Let's move on to the brake conversion.
Here we go. Right, let's pull this brake line through here. Mine's going underneath the axle and then coming up to right there. So, this bracket here lines up with these two holes and they are 12s. Very good. All right, this is the back of the trailing arm and this is the brake line that runs to the caliper this way and back to the chassis this way. As you can see, it's kind of close to the, the axle here. So what I need to do is put a clamp down here to hold it away from that axle. So what I've got is a nut cert in the arm, which I already pre-drilled. And then I've got a P-clamp here. Like that. And then run a bolt through there with a washer. And that'll hold it out of the way. There we are. That will hold that cable clear of the axle but still allow the arm to go up and down. Beauty. While we're down here, this is a good opportunity to run the ABS sensor back to the hub. Sensor pops up there. There we go. And that's the ABS line done. Probably about time to chuck this axle nut on, which is a 32 millimeter. Now it's time to start getting this handbrake cable through. So first thing I'm going to do is just take off this clamp. Because we can't get it through here with a clamp on it. I've got this running over the chassis brace which is up here. You can run it however you like. It seems to be the good path for me. Should I get this pin out of here first? clip in here put that pin through the security clip pin through it that's the handbrake cable done ABS rehooked up and the brake line found this in the OEM stash so I'm just going to use that instead of one of the brackets that came with this kit that's got the brake cable, handbrake cable tucked away from the wheel. Now we can move further back towards the chassis and mounting it to the handbrake. If you have a 97 and up CRV, you will already have a plate like this underneath the carpet and you will probably already have a handbrake mounted here. Mine's a 96 spec Japanese version. So the handbrake was actually up here in the dash and it ran through where I now have the clutch. So I've had to source all of this stuff from a 97 model that had the handbrake on the floor. So at this point in the disc conversion, if you don't have a 96 spec and you already have all this on the floor, all you'd have to do is remove this plate, remove the cables out the back, and then re-plumb in your 94 to 97 cable, which is this one here, and um, adjust it here and you're pretty much good to go. For me, I have a little bit a little bit more extra steps to do. So let's start off with getting this where it should be. I've already got it roughly marked, but what I need to do is get the driver's seat in here. Well, driver's for me, right hand side seat. Get it in place, not bolted down, but just in its, in its resting spot so that I can then mark these holes here to drill into the floor and mount this bracket down. But I can't do that without knowing where this, uh, the seat's going to sit. So let's get a seat in here and see if I've marked this outline correctly and get some uh, permanent marks on the floor to start drilling. Now that I've got this test fit and it's not colliding with anything, I'm happy with the distance that's going to put on these cables. I'm just going to mark this.
Now that we got the handbrake in kind of an OEM position, we can now move on to the, where you would probably be up to if you already had the handbrake on the floor. And that would be removing this plate. To get to this plate, you're probably going to have to take the back seats out and pull the carpet forward. Normally at this point when you remove this, you'll have two handbrake cables coming in here that were for your drums. And they would have had rubber grommets that were a similar shape to this. This is a template I made from the handbrake cables I ordered off Rock Auto, these ones here. So for the left hand side of the car, which is this one, I've reused the grommet that was using some sort of electrical connection. I'm not really sure where that goes to, but whatever sharing that grommet with that one instead of cutting two i could have put another one in here but because there was already a hole here it was going to be very difficult to space everything out this template here is the shape of the guide for the handbrake cables and now what i need to do is put a hole in here and then i will be at the next step with you guys which would be having two holes here, ready to accept 94, 97 disc brake handbrake cables from an Accord. The um, left hand side, which is this one because they actually cross, um, is already mounted to the car and I'm quite happy with it. So let's go underneath and see where we're going to route this one. Hey, okay, back under the car here at the control arm we just fitted the disc to. Got some clamps here we can use, some 12 mils. And just here we've got another mounting spot with cable. And that's the handbrake cables routed and sorted. Okay, rears are sorted, so let's replace the fronts now. And on the back we got two 14s. And then the bracket itself is two 17s. Woo, she's pretty dirty. I just need to take a wire wheel to all of this. Okay, so this one goes in here. That means we can remove this one. Ha! Right, uh, give this a quick clean down with some brake cleaner outside. Uh, probably do the same thing with this. Got these cleaned up, now I just gotta work on restoring these sliders a little bit. So let's pull apart this shit. Get a new one of these fickers on. There we go. See how we are for grease levels. There we go, it's feeling pretty good. And then the next one. So we got brand new little pad spring thing there, and then brand new guides, new rubbers. Good to go. Let's slap this on the car. And these are 113 newton meters or 83 foot pounds. Torque spec for these is 49 newtonmeters or 36 foot-pounds. Okay, the torque spec for the banjo bolt is 34 newtonmeters or 25 foot-pounds. But I don't have a torque wrench for that range, so I just have to go by feel. It's about there.
All right, it's time we get some fluid back in the system. All right, here we are at the prelude caliper, and because the bleed is now on the bottom, we need to remove it. So take it off of here and um, twist it up to bleed it. So let's see if we can do that with everything attached. Okay, I've got the caliper off and I've got some grips in here holding in a bunch of old brake pads and metal stacked up to act as shims so that if I need to stand on the brakes, the piston won't come flying out. It'll have something to squish against. And I have got this above the banjo fitting. So now it should be able to squish all the air out. Not building pressure. Should be getting close to it now with all the corners. I think that's as best as you're gonna get. I think it's full of air. Yeah, I think I just heard this start to squish this uh, these pads I have locked in here. All right, I'll let that out. All right, and that's closed off. Oh yeah, there's a lot of air coming through there. Oh, there Alright, give that another couple and I'll... Alright, I'll let that out now. Oh, less bubbles came through that time. Okay. Go try the other side. Yeah. Got the rear calipers all put back together and bled. So now let's test this handbrake system, see how we're going. Right, I'm happy with the setup, so I'm just going to chuck everything back together and that'll be it. Be a wrap. And that's an RD1 with a rear disc conversion. How oh, good. Even managed to get the, the front upgraded nicely. Got it bled, fluid level's good. Well, that was a long video. Hopefully this helps anyone who's trying to do this in the future. If you wanna support, the best thing you can do is just subscribe, commenting, liking, sharing, all that kind of stuff helps me uh, get seen by more people. And uh, see you in the next one. Should have this rolling and um, probably start on the exhaust. Might even be able to pull this out of the, uh, the garage. So that'll be good. So yeah, cheers, see you then.